You know, a beautiful sunny day like today, it takes me back to Chicago, back to my grad school days, just sitting by the lakefront without a care in the world, thinking about the mysteries of the universe. Hmm. But that's not our subject today. We need to compute some more derivatives, and watch out, they're going to get even more complicated, so hang on tight. Let's take the derivative of secant theta times tangent of theta. Now for this function, we're thinking of it as a function of theta. The input variable is theta. That's the independent variable. We're calling the output the function g. So g of theta depends on theta. Everything works the same if we use theta as our variable instead of x. It's all the same, just using a different symbol for the variable. It's good practice. Let's see, so we have a product of two functions here. So to find the derivative of secant times tangent, we need to take the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Nice. All right, that's the product rule. And now we go and use our derivatives of secant and tangent. The derivative of secant is secant times tangent. And then we also have this other factor of tangent that came from before. For the second term, we have secant times the derivative of tangent. That's secant squared, like so. OK, that's the answer. We can leave it like that if we want. But there is a way to simplify, at least a little bit. Let's factor out the common factor of secant. The two tangents combine to give tangent squared. Remember, tangent to the two, or secant to the two like this, that just means tangent times tangent, or secant times secant. OK, now here we're going to do something that's a little bit more exciting. Check it out. I'm going to do this as a side derivation in this little box. This is a little sidebar. What we're going to do is we're going to start from cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. This is the most important trigonometric identity. It's encoding the Pythagorean theorem for the right triangle inside of the unit circle determined by the angle theta. Now, if I divide both sides of this equation by cosine squared, what do I get? We'll have cosine squared theta over cosine squared theta. That's going to be 1. We have sine squared theta over cosine squared theta. That's going to be tangent squared. And then on the right hand side, we have 1 over cosine squared theta. So I just took the fundamental trigonometric identity and I divided both sides of the equation by cosine squared. We can rewrite that as 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to, remember, 1 over cosine is secant. So this is secant squared theta there on the right-hand side. OK, so that's a really nice identity. Uh, you could write that in a different way depending on your preferences. We could write that as tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared theta minus 1 by moving the one to the other side. I don't really care which way we write it. The point is that it's really cosine squared plus sine squared, but translated into a statement about tangent and secant. That can be useful sometimes when you're doing some complicated business with trig functions. Um, what would have happened if we had divided by sine squared instead of cosine squared? Well, there's a corresponding rule for cotangent, if we had divided by sine squared, we would get cotangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared of theta. So that's another way of writing the cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1 identity, another way of writing down the Pythagorean theorem. So all of the green boxes contain the same information in some sense. They're all the same identity, but they're in different forms depending on which trig functions you want to be working with. Okay, 
Now, as a side note, let's go back to the derivative at hand. Here's what I want to do. I want to replace the tangent squared theta using this identity, using tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1, just because it's going to help simplify just a little bit. So uh, let me move my equal sign a little bit to the left over here, give us more room to work. Replacing that tangent squared by secant squared minus 1, like so. That was the tangent squared term. We still have the other copy of secant squared, like that. And then we can simplify. We'll have secant times 2 secant squared theta minus 1. You could write it that way. Or you could expand it out as 2 secant cubed theta minus secant of theta. And I think for this derivative, I actually prefer this final way of writing the answer. I'm not really sure why. Again, it's a matter of style. It's just a little bit more compact than this answer we had before. Of course, they're all the same function. They're all correct, but I kind of like writing it that way. The picnic near the lakeside in Chicago is the start of a lazy afternoon, early one October. We begin with a scene one meter wide, which we view from just one meter away. Now every 10 seconds, we will look from 10 times farther away, and our field of view will be 10 times wider. This square is 10 meters wide, and in 10 seconds, the next square will be 10 times as wide. Our picture will center on the picnickers, even after they've been lost to sight. 100 meters wide, the distance a man can run in 10 seconds. Cars crowd the highway. Power boats lie at their docks. The colorful bleachers are soldiers' field. This square is a kilometer wide, 1,000 meters. The distance a racing car can travel in 10 seconds. We see the great city on the lake shore. Onwards, let's compute the derivative of 3 cosine of x divided by 5x cubed minus 3 cosecant of x. To compute this derivative, we have a fraction involving two somewhat complicated functions. There's no cancellation or anything. The only real hope that we have is to use the quotient rule. That's what we're going to do. Quotient rule says this is the derivative of the top times the bottom. minus that all-important minus sign. you got to make sure that's on the right term. The top times the derivative of the bottom. Whoops. I meant to say the derivative of the bottom. So that's a d by dx there. We need to take the derivative of the bottom. There we go. We're not done yet. We have to square the bottom as well. Gnarly. What a mess. Okay, just to be clear, that was a typo there. Should be the derivative operator. We're taking the derivative of the bottom there. Alrighty. So what do we get? First of all, derivative of 3 cosine of x, well, the derivative of cosine is minus sine, and multiplying by 3 just comes along for the ride constants don't matter, so it'll be minus 3 sine of x, and that's being multiplied by 5x cubed minus 3 cosecant of x. Okay, over here we have minus 3 cosine of x, and then we're taking the derivative of 5x cubed minus 3 cosine of x. First of all, the derivative of 5x cubed is 15x squared by the power rule. I bring the 3 down, multiply it by 5 to get the 15, and then I subtract 1 to leave an x squared. Next up, we need to take the derivative of minus 3 cosecant of x. Well, the derivative of cosecant is minus cosecant times cotangent. So we'll have minus 3 times, inside there, a second set of parentheses, minus cosecant times cotangent. That's the derivative of cosecant. 
My oh my. Now, what about the bottom here? We're gonna have to square this. Squaring the 5x cubed term, we have 25x to the sixth. That's five squared, 25, times x cubed squared, x to the sixth. We'll have minus two times the cross terms. The cross terms combine to give 15 x cubed cosecant of x. And then finally, we're squaring minus three cosecant of x. That gives nine cosecant squared of x. My, oh my, what a messy function. Have no fear, persevere. Let's multiply it out and see if it'll get a little bit nicer. So we have a minus 15 x cubed sine of x coming from these two terms. We have a plus nine sine of x times cosecant of x, right? Minus three times minus three, and then sine times cosecant, and the two minus signs cancel. Two wrongs make a right. Now check it out. Remember cosecant, it's not one over cosine, it's one over sine. So this term right here, that's actually one over sine. So for multiplying cosecant by sine, that's actually just canceling that sine by the one over sine. So those two cancel to just give one. That's gonna be helpful. All right, moving on, we still have to do the rest of the numerator. We have minus three cosine of x times, first of all, 15 x squared. So we'll have minus 45 x squared cosine of x. And then we have these terms being multiplied by the minus three cosine of x. Now I've already run out of room here on my fraction. What do you do in math when your paper isn't wide enough to handle this extra long fraction we got? Well, you could turn the paper around so that it's, you know, hot dog instead of hamburger or whatever we want to call it, the horizontal perspective. Instead, I'm just going to kind of draw an extra line and I'm going to remember that it's part of this fraction, right? It's important that you don't cram stuff in. You got to have good technique for your uh, notation. Okay, check it out. We have minus, minus, minus. Three wrongs make a wrong. So combining all those minuses here and picking up the three times three, we'll have plus, oh, no, nope. three wrongs make a wrong, right? Minus, three minuses is a minus sign. Three wrongs make a wrong. So it's minus nine cosine of x, cosecant of x, cotangent of x. That's this term being multiplied out by the minus three cosine of x. My, oh my. What happens downstairs? Meh, I don't really see anything we can do, so I'm just gonna copy it down. 25x to the sixth minus 30x cubed cosecant of x plus nine cosecant squared x, like so. And then we remember that this fraction is just part of what came before. Okay, continuing the calculation, what do we get? Well, let's see, because of this cancellation, we were left with nine. Are there any other sorts of cancellations like that that we can do? In fact, there are, right? Because cosecant of x, that's one over sine. Cotangent of x, that's cosine over sine. So if we think about these three terms, we have cosine, we have one over sine, and we have cosine over sine. Those will combine together to give cosine squared over sine squared. So we'll write that actually in terms of cotangent squared. Here we go. Minus 15 x cubed sine of x, leave that term alone, plus nine, all by its lonesome, minus 45 x squared cosine of x. And then this, finest, this final term is minus nine cotangent squared of x. That cotangent squared is coming from uh, combining these trig functions appropriately. And then in the basement, the denominator, same thing we had before. 
I don't see any other simplifications we could do in this case. I don't think there's any other cancellations, so that's it. That fraction is the derivative. That on orbit belongs to Pluto. A fringe of a myriad comets too faint to see completes the solar system. Okay, next up we're going to take the derivative of t to the minus 3 times e to the t times cotangent of t. you got to be careful with my handwriting. That t is the variable. That t is just part of the function cotangent. All right, now check it out. That's a product of three different functions, right? That one times that one times that one. There's no simplifications we can do. So in this case, we can't just immediately apply the product rule to get everything, we're going to have to apply the product rule in an iterative way. What do I mean by that? I mean, let's first apply the product rule where that piece is the first function f, and where this piece, the whole function e to the t, cotangent of t, is the second function g. So let's first apply the product rule that way. Okay, and I'll write out all the steps for you. It's the derivative of the first piece times the second, no problem, plus the first piece, that's t to the minus 3, times the derivative of the second. Now here's what I mean by iteratively apply the product rule. Now that we've applied the product rule once, one of the derivatives in the product rule is again a product of two functions. So I'm going to analyze that derivative itself in terms of the product rule. So I'll be thinking of that e to the t as the first function f, and I'll be thinking of that cotangent of t as the second function g. Now, it looks like I made a typo. My T sort of became an S. Never be so sloppy in your own work. That's supposed to be cotangent of T. OK, here we go. From the beginning, from the equal sign, the derivative of T to the minus 3 by the power rule is minus 3 T to the minus 4. That's being multiplied by E to the T cotangent of T. Very good. Next up, we have t to the minus 3 times the derivative of e to the t times cotangent of t. So we're going to apply the product rule again. We get the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's the product rule. Okay. Continuing onward, I'm just going to leave that first piece the same. Nothing we can really do. Now we have t to the minus 3 times this in here, which was the derivative of this product of functions. Derivative of e to the t is just e to the t. So that's the first term. Now we have e to the t times the derivative of cotangent. The derivative of cotangent is minus cosecant squared, like so. So, 
when the dust settles, what do we get? Notice that there's a common e to the t present in all the terms. And there's actually a common t to the minus 3. I suppose I'll factor that out as well. Nothing wrong with that. So we'll have t to the minus 3 times e to the t. And when we factor that out of the first function, we'll have minus 3 to the t minus 1. That would be minus 3 over t, if you want to write it that way, times the cotangent of t. That was the first function here. For the second function, we've already accounted for the t to the minus 3 and the e to the t. So what's left? It's just cotangent of t. Well, it looks like my variable t was missing up here. That should have been cotangent of t. Oof. Tough problem for notation. Sorry about that. And then finally, we already have t to the minus 3 and e to the t, but we have minus cosecant squared as well. So there you have it. There's your final answer. If you wanted to, you could write this as minus 3 cotangent over t, or you could factor out the cotangent from these two terms. I don't think that really helps anything. I think this is perfectly good. Six, five, four, three, two, one. We are back at our starting point. We slow up at one meter, 10 to the zero power.